Hey, Center Grace family, good to be with you again on Wednesday. Today, we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about the trellis and about spiritual disciplines. We're going to focus in on prayer. But before we do that, I want to call to your attention the fact that most of the time when Jesus was teaching parables about the kingdom of God, he would do it through a metaphor of agriculture or gardening, which is kind of like this metaphor of the, the trellis. There was this one place, for example, in Mark chapter 4, where Jesus told this parable about the growing seed. And he said that a farmer goes out and he scatters seed, and he, he goes to sleep and he rises each day, and the seed would grow miraculously, and he knew not how. And when I think about spiritual disciplines, I, I think about that parable sometimes. Because spiritual disciplines, whether it's sacred reading or like we're going to talk about today, prayer, it's, it's like we're sowing seeds to the Spirit of God. We're, we're asking God to do something in our lives through it. And again, go back to the trellis parable for just a second uh, to, to think about it differently. Each one of these things, whether it's sacred reading or prayer or Sabbathing, spending time with our, our friends, these horizontal structures that we build in our lives, all of those things are there to support the fruitfulness that God wants to create in our lives as we practice these things. These things, in other words, aren't ends in themselves. They're a means to an end. They're a means to a greater end of, of growing in friendship with God. That's one of the ways that you can think about any of these spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines are the way that we exercise friendship with God. And that as we do that, God creates fruitfulness in our lives. Or it's like scattering seed, and then God grows this, this beautiful or lush garden in our lives. That's what spiritual disciplines are really about. And today, as we focus on prayer, I think that we all need to learn how to pray. None of us is, is born or just naturally good, necessarily, at prayer. Think about Jesus' own disciples. In, in Matthew 6 or Luke 11, when Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer to his disciples, it was done in a context when his disciples said to him, Hey, Jesus, Teach us how to pray because we don't know how to do it. And there are two things that I want to point out today, two principles and then a shape that we visited before but that I want to revisit as we work our way through the Lord's Prayer. But there are two principles that I think sometimes keep us from praying, ways that we think about prayer that sometimes hinder us because it's a wrong way of thinking about prayer. The first one is this. Prayer is not instigation but response. Prayer is not us starting something. Um, it's not us instigating something. It's us actually responding uh, to something that God has already said or, or already done. In, in the uh, Old Testament, you see in the Psalms, which is one of the best uh, kind of treatments of, of how to pray uh, in, in all of the Bible, you see that there are five books of the Psalms. And most people actually think that that may correspond to the five books of Moses called the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The idea in the, the Jewish mind was that when God speaks, his words deserve a response. Parents, you know what that's all about. If your kids, if you say something to your kids, you want a response, not just, not just nothing right? And so when God has said things to us, we respond back to him. So prayer is not like starting an engine cold because God has already said something. God has already begun a work. Prayer is response. It's us responding to, to what we know God has said because we've spent time doing sacred reading or, or we've, we've had a conversation with a friend that, that stirs something up within us and we want to respond to God in that. Or uh, we respond because God is, is doing something. Something happened in life, and we believe God's at work, so we respond. So prayer is not instigation, it's response. But then the second thing that we have to remember is that prayer is not about impression, it's about intimacy. Prayer is not really about trying to impress God with what we say, the theology that we have, or anything like that. It's about developing intimacy with Him. Again, the Spirit Spiritual disciplines are exercising friendship with God. That's what it's really all about. And so often, I think, when we're praying, we feel like we have to get our words right or we have to use really impressive words. And Jesus, in Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching his disciples about the Lord's Prayer, he said, you know, God doesn't hear you because of your long, eloquent prayers. God hears you 
because he loves you. He's your father. He wants to be intimate with you. He wants to develop and cultivate a friendship with you. And again, that's what spiritual disciplines are aimed at, us cultivating friendship, intimacy with God. So what do we pray about? Well, when Jesus taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer, he kind of gave them six themes that they could think through. The first is the character of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We can pray about God's holiness. We can pray about God's love, his kindness, his mercy, his grace. We pray about the character of God. But then we also pray about the kingdom of God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When, when we pray for God's justice or his righteousness or his mercy to be made known, what we're praying for is God's kingdom to be made manifest and how desperate we are for that in these days. So we pray about God's character. We pray about the kingdom. We also, Jesus taught us, can pray for provision. Give us today our daily bread. God cares about the things that we need in life. And God wants us to bring those needs to him. 1 Peter 5 says, Cast your cares upon the Lord, for he loves you. We can pray for provision. This fourth thing is a big deal. The other thing Jesus teaches us to pray about is forgiveness. Not only that God would forgive us for our sins, but that we would have the grace of God so manifest in our lives that we would be able to forgive others. Lord, forgive us our debts even as we forgive our debtors, right? And then these last two things, I bet you pray for pretty frequently. But Jesus said we can pray for guidance and we can pray for protection. <clears throat> Jesus said toward the end of his prayer, lead me not into temptation. Guide me, Lord, in the way that I should go. And also protect me, keep me from the evil one. We can pray about all those things. So when you're praying, pray in line with God's character. Thank him for who he is and what he's doing. Pray about his kingdom, that his kingdom would be made manifest in your life, in your home, in your kids' lives, in your friends' lives. Pray for provision. Pray for those things that you need. Bring those needs to God. Pray for forgiveness, that God would forgive you. Confess your sins to him. But also pray that you would be able to forgive other people and that they would be able to forgive you for those wrongs that you've done. Pray for guidance. Pray for protection. But remember, prayer is not about impressing God. It's about being intimate with Him. It's about developing a friendship with God. Let me pray for you as we go today. Lord, thanks so much for my brothers and sisters at Center Grace. And Lord, I ask that you would be with them today. Provide for them all that they need. Lord, for those who are, are weak physically, those who are struggling emotionally, God, for those who are, are sick or in any need, Lord, we pray that you would satisfy their needs according to your provision through Christ. And Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us by the grace and the power of your Holy Spirit today. Father, fill us with your word that, that our lives would more and more come to reflect the fullness of who you are. Lord, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name, amen. As you go today, think about how you can be praying you can be cultivating that intimate relationship with God. We love you guys. We'll see you on Sunday.